we've talked about the Nebraska Senate before. In the state of Nebraska, they don't have a House of Representatives. They only have a Senate, so it's unicameral. And we've talked about them before because Senator Megan Hunt is the mother of a trans child. And so she's spoken out about anti-trans legislation in the state. Another character in this saga that we've talked about before is Senator Michaela Kavanaugh. We know of her for similar reasons, because back when Nebraska was trying to pass anti-trans legislation, Senator Kavanaugh like basically led the effort to filibuster. So we talked about it, uh oh, a bit last year or maybe the year before. Goodness gracious, it's been a long couple of years. <laughs> but today we're not going to be really talking about Megan Hunt, but we are going to be talking about Michaela, and we are going to be talking about another senator called Steve Halloran. Currently in the Nebraska Senate, they're reviewing an obscenity law that's aiming to ban more books from public schools, effectively. They're trying to expand what is currently already considered unacceptable material to give to young people. And the way in which Senator Halloran chose to go about arguing for his point was wild. <laughs> um, like, so wild that I can't play you the video of what he said. I can't even quote him directly. I have to allude generally to what he said because it was really messed up. So they're having a legislative debate about keeping obscenity out of K through 12 schools. When Steve Halloran came on to give his portion of the debate, he decided to read a passage from a book that's in, I guess, some schools. Again, like, I don't know what evidence has been produced that like allegedly this group is not only in schools, but was allegedly assigned to students. Like, okay, cool. So he decided to read. If you're enjoying this video, hit the like button, maybe subscribe, hit all notifications if you want. Feel free to check out the links in the description. You might find some merch you like, or you can hit up the Patreon to support the content and find free stuff. From this book, it's called Lucky, and it's by a person called Alice Siebold. And he says he found it in 16 school libraries in Nebraska and that it was assigned reading for some accelerated reading classes. That tells me that it's accelerated reading classes. Do you mean like advanced placement English? What do you mean reading classes? That's a weird way to phrase that. Anyway, so this book is about Alice, her experience of experiencing sexual assault, um, sexual violence, and this article describes it as, and this guy decided to read an excerpt that, and I have the video here, and I started listening to it earlier, and I was like, I can't play this on stream because it's talking about a violent event, this particular passage. And what this senator decided to do was he, he would say something, a quote from the book, like, I want you to do this sexual act. And then he was like, Senator Kavanaugh. Now I will point out that Michaela Kavanaugh's br uh, brother, John Kavanaugh, is also a senator in this body. So the, the Senator Halloran claims that his his mention of quote Senator Kavanaugh was directed at the brother John and not Michaela, but because they're both called Senator Kavanaugh, frankly, if there are any victims of sexual assault in the body, that was probably not a cool thing to say. And like, yeah, to allude to like a, a sexual assault happening to someone in the body. Crazy. Michaela Kavanaugh called it inappropriate, disgusting, out of line, and unnecessary. She says, colleagues, that was beyond the pale. She was tearful, saying, that was harassing. That was a book about sexual violence. I have done nothing but try to have a respectful debate with Senator Albrecht, who, uh, she, Albrecht is the one who um, proposed this bill. And I've just, she says, I've tried to have a debate with Senator Albrecht about her bill, which impacts my children. And Albrecht said she had left the floor during Senator Halloran's reading, but she was mortified by Kavanaugh's name being invoked. Kavanaugh continues, I didn't know you were capable of such cruelty. That was unbecoming of you and unbecoming of this body. I hope other people that are Republicans will stand up and defend me. He then posts like a video, you know, justifying his actions. He said something like, Oh, the reason why this is so inappropriate is because this book is basically a guide for how to sexual assault. And several people have called on him to resign. 
Megan Hunt, of course, who we discussed earlier, called on him to resign, but also Republicans have been calling on him to resign. So John Kavanaugh did weigh in and said that Halloran seems to have missed the point of the book. Um, there are graphic scenes in books and graphic things that happen to people in real life. Continuing, stories have context and they give meaning to the people who read them and feel alone. Um, they adjourned 18 minutes after Senator Halloran's comments. They were like, well, you know, this is not a time to have debate. Basically, everyone in the chamber was so rattled by what was brought up and the fact that it was directed toward another senator in this way. Um, you know, they ended up adjourning. Lucky was one of the most banned books in the country during the 2021-22 school year. So it's already illegal under Nebraska state law that it's not okay to provide obscenity to minors. Yeah, John Kavanaugh said, yes, life is gross and very unpleasant, but that's what life is. And people who experience that want to know they're not alone. Yeah, he's basically trying to say, like, here's a reason why this would be in a school. And here's the thing, guys. Here's my little two cents on it. It's not like it wasn't a subject that we went over in English class when I was younger. For example, To Kill a Mockingbird is a book about a black man being accused of a rape that he did not commit. So when I was in, I think that was eighth or ninth grade, so, you know, late middle school, early high school age, we did an entire book about a false accusation, basically. And like this whole, the whole trial of like, how could he have even forced her? How could he have hit her if his hand is all messed up or whatever? If you're in an advanced placement class, advanced reading class, then yeah, it makes sense for teenagers to have discussions about sexual assault and to, you know, hear depictions of it in, in this way that's like, here's this vulnerable situation that I was in. So maybe you might become more aware of vulnerable situations like, oh, maybe you wouldn't have realized that doing something could have gotten you hurt and now you know. Or maybe you're the kind of person who doesn't really have a ton of empathy for others. Maybe you are the kind of person who has pressured girls your age to do sexual things with you and reading an account of some of like how it feels to someone to be sexually violated maybe that is the key point of empathy that you need in order to understand that your behavior is inappropriate right there are a number of reasons i could give for why it's good for youth to have access to not only knowledge of but even graphic depictions of harmful sexual acts or harmful acts in general. I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings is another common classroom book that depicts it. Did I read this? No, I did not read this one. This was, or at least this was not the one that I was thinking of. Good shout though, Maya Angelou. Yeah, isn't the point of school to provide context for reality? Like literature class does this through storytelling. Michaela Cavanaugh says, that was so out of line and unnecessary and disgusting to say my name over and over again like that. You don't know anything about anyone else's life. And I can tell you that women in this body have been subjected to sexual violence. Continuing, yeah, I didn't know that you were capable of such cruelty. Oh, he goes, oh, if you had listened closely, I was addressing her lawyer brother, John. But that also is missing the point because how do you know that her brother hadn't been sexually assaulted at some point? Like in the context of a book being taught in a school, these things being taught in a school are going to be contextualized. There's going to be... Like, hey, by the way, this next chapter is going to have a graphic scene. So if you're, you know, you might want to avoid reading it. Like when I was a teenager, we read Eli Weisel. I can't remember what the book was called. It's his book about the Holocaust and like his, it's basically, it's like an autobiography. It's like his book about his experience in the Holocaust. Night. Thank you. There's a scene where he notices that the girls, as they're standing at attention in the camp, they were just like bleeding down the sides of their legs because they weren't being provided with sanitary pads for periods. And like we discussed that harsh reality and I, that was middle school for me. I would have been 12 at that time. And my teacher was like, oh, so for the boys in the class, you know, you might want to skip this next section or plug your ears or whatever, because we're going to be talking about something kind of graphic related to what girls experience. Like, yeah, when you're in the classroom, you're provided with context and you're like, we're addressing this for this reason. And we're going to explore the themes and explore the ideas, you know, did this character do something right or wrong? Like, you know, what were the circumstances? Like, what is the experience like afterwards? Also, like, 
if a traumatic thing happens to you where you're harmed, how do you deal with that afterwards? Like how many people out there don't even know that what they've experienced was sexual assault until they learn the words for it. You know, this is why we encourage sex education for young kids because there are kids who can be like having things done to them by adults around them and they don't know what it is. They know that it doesn't make them feel good. Like it makes them feel violated and bad, but they don't know what is happening to them until you start equipping them with the language. So I think it's kind of the same, the same logic for, you know, understanding consent sometimes means having hard conversations about consent violations. And that just seems totally normal to me. Not only are these Republicans against the teaching of these things, but they're also willing to be deeply inappropriate in front of God and everybody. Like while you're doing your job, you're basically you know, reading sexual remarks and then directing them toward one of your colleagues. Yeah, with appropriate context, kids are, they're very able to handle the content. You just have to give them some credit. Yeah, if you study Greek and Norse mythology in school, like Greek and Roman mythology, you're going to have to talk about, like the whole story of Cassandra is that she was a priestess and then she was raped and then cast out of the temple and like cursed by Athena to, to like, you'll have all, you'll have all correct prophecies, but you're cursed to have no one ever listen to you. Like... Medusa, what is the way that she is because she was sexually assaulted. Basic education about the classic, the classical studies requires discussion about sexual assault. But yeah, being informed is the thing that they're against, as per usual. I do hope that this dude resigns. I don't think he's going to. I, I actually don't hope that he resigns, I think. I want there to be some kind of punishment where he gets kicked out of his job. If he resigns, that's too nice. I want him fired. Let's, the one thing Trump is good for, let's get him in. You fired. That's the only thing he's good for. He is going to be term limited, but the supposed investigation that's happening will take months. Annoying. But I will say other news that's not in these articles because Cruz brought it to us fresh off the hot presses. This law has been voted down, as I understand it. This obscenity law that they were trying to pass it apparently required quoting an intense sexual assault scene in front of the entire body. Yeah, it has not passed. And hopefully that means it's going to fizzle out and die. But it seems like they're going to keep doing it. I'm honestly kind of surprised that this is the particular book that he read out of. And then he didn't pick something like genderqueer to show like the pictures that were in it. Because um, I assumed that by obscenity laws, they were going to be targeting exclusively trans content or queer content as they do. Yeah, this stuff cannot be allowed to slide. Yeah, that's crazy, Phoebe. Started my period a full two years before I was educated about it. Useless. I spent a long time feeling like I had done something wrong and flushing my underwear down the toilet. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, thanks for reminding me of Chaya Reichik's uh, asking Taylor Lorenz if she wants to see a picture of a job. Oh boy. I, I, totally normal people things to do. Because I think that happened at, at CPAC when Dead Domain was like talking. Someone brought up the book Genderqueer, and like, I think tried to show them pictures from their phone about it. But what is up with these people being like, yeah, look at this porn I have on my phone. Like, like, personally, I don't think that the images that they're showing in the book Genderqueer are porn. It's not meant to be titillating. There is such a thing as like naked bodies. And even there is such a thing as like depicting sexual acts in a way that is not pornographic. I know that this is like a pff, big brain amazing concepts to the conservatives that they're never going to be able to wrap their head around. But what was it? Uh, was Vosh saying that he saw a video of a, an entire child being born? So, okay, that's a video that you were shown in school, probably middle school or high school, where you're witnessing a cis woman's genitals and an entire baby coming out of it, like ostensibly sexual body part, the result of a sexual act, very graphic, very bloody, very, like, some people would be like, oh my god, I can't believe you're letting children see this, but that's what sex education is like. Look at all these things I consider obscenities, which I keep on my person at all times. <laughs> I remember being jump scared by a birth video in the middle of an educational sex ed tape. And you know, I, I know that this is, this is a stupid example, and it's just bringing it up because it's funny. Um, Monty Python's The Meaning of Life. There is a scene where there are a bunch of students in the school at Oh my God, the things that my dad let me watch when I was a kid. There's a bunch of kids in a school, a bunch of boys at a boys school and their teacher who's played by John Cleese 
it is like he's talking about sex and, and educating them. And then his wife comes in and she gets naked and he's like, He's like narrating the sex as it's happening in this super clinical, non-sexy way. He's like, and then the man inserts his penis and uh, like he starts thrusting in and out. And then and then the woman can push back with her hips and then she kind of moves a little bit and he's like, thank you, darling. And like, it's so stupid, even in the most extreme of situations where they're depicting literal, actual human beings having sex in the same room as you, the context of it can completely change whether it's titillating or whether it's enjoyable in any way, nudity doesn't essentially mean something lascivious or prurient. Much love to my patrons, especially Tiago Nascimento, Mersh Rolvog, Michelle Frateroli, Amanda B, Wellington Marcus, Michelle Winter, Danielle McDonald, DZXN, Suzanne Maynard, Spooky Heather Sylvia, Jamie Jam, Pastnell Infinity, Nova, Sojo, Elizabeth Bartell, Ella V. Nobody, Kevin Young, Sarah A, Athiet, Celeste, Desi Quiche, Liam Hodgson, and Mr. Atheist.